Coming up, I get a World War II machete from my brother. I get a World War II designed commando dagger from Doug and 10 great EDC fixed blade knives. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments from this past week was from Spaceman5563. And he's quoting me saying, I'm dating the knife by the girlfriend. LMAO, I had a cold steel magnum tanto, he says, disappear while going through a bad spell. So I get it. Thanks for the very entertaining show. Spaceman, thank you, sir. And, uh, you know, sometimes relationships end and knives disappear. It's a, it's a sad thing, but, uh, you know... They make more of those, so you can go get another one. Uh, And then the second comment cracked me up. This was from Daniel Calzada, TY90C. He says, holy crap, House MD now reviews knives. And this was uh, during one of the videos where I had kind of a scraggly beard, and I guess it looked a little bit like Hugh Laurie, the actor on the movie, on the show House. Uh, House MD now reviewing knives. Yes, Daniel Calzada, we all look alike, don't we? Thanks for commenting, one and all. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching the videos, the podcasts, the interviews, and all, and joining us on Thursday Night Knives. We gave away a spectacular knife on this past Thursday Night Knives. And later on, I'll be revealing what we'll be giving away for next uh, month's Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. But if you're not a Gentleman Junkie, that's a patron, uh, Patreon member. Uh, Still, come to Thursday Night Knives because uh, I'll tell you what, we give away a lot of knives. And that's not to get viewers and likes. That's because uh, I am flooded by generous friends who give me lots of knives, like Dave of OG Blade Reviews. He just gives me tons of knives. I got to give them away. Share the wealth. All right. uh, All that said, let's get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. All right, in my front right pocket today, I had the Dirk Pinkerton ringed inversion. The inversion we just uh, we first saw as a uh, reverse tanto, truly a reverse tanto uh, with a recurve um, that came out through Kaiser, and uh, Kaiser produced that for a few years without the ring, and then they discontinued it. But D- <clears throat> Dirk knew he was onto something, uh, reworked the blade, added a ring. <clears throat> Did some really great stuff to it, including that orange peel uh, finish and the S35 VN blade steel. And um, yeah, very, very psyched about this knife. This was uh, this is a almost two year old uh, release. This was a, a pre order from him. And, you know, I wasn't going to do this. I wasn't going to do this. Where is it? Is it in my pocket? Um, Here's something else coming out from, ah, oh, I put it over there. Anyway, Dirk, uh, as you know, he does a lot of uh, licensed designs to our favorite, some of our favorite companies. So you get a lot of Kaisers and Concepts and really great uh, produced designs from Dirk Pinkerton. He does his own custom work in his own shop. I've got a number of his beautiful fixed blade knives, but he also comes out with these kind of folding designs and releases them under Pinkerton Designs and has... Uh, some of the best manufacturers in Taiwan and and or China uh, making them. So I uh, had this one in my pocket today, by the way, that waves open beautifully. And as far as I'm concerned, if you have a, a folding karambit, or if you can tell by the fact I'm putting my hand, if you have a folding karambit or you have a folding pickal, it must be waved. Otherwise, what's the point? All right, next up, I have the Benny's Clip. This is from Jack Wolf Knives, of course. This is the second release of this gorgeous slip joint knife based on the Tony Bowes Lanny's Clip. So that gives you a big, long clip point blade, very unique with the long, swooshing uh, swedge. You have a quite a bit of straight, I'd say four-fifths of the blade is nice and straight, almost recurved so that you can sharpen through that belly uh, over time. And then you get a pretty extreme belly and an upswept tip. So you get kind of the best of all worlds here. This one, uh, this release has a longer triple fluted bolster, blasted titanium integral with the liners there. 
And then my version has this absolutely luxurious and beautiful purple kiranite. <clears throat> to me, it looks like the velvet curtains on Rita Hayworth's, uh, you know, boudoir window. I don't know. Uh, just a beautiful, luxurious material. I like kiranite a lot. You saw it a lot on older slip joints from back in the day. And I like to see uh, Ben bringing it back out. Not that he's the first one, but you don't see too much kiranite on modern slip joints. Uh, this one, of course, riding in the front pocket, actually, the front right pocket right next to this, because I've been carrying my phone in my left pocket. Uh, you don't need to know that, but that's where this road and it was in this beautiful and supple awesome supplied slip i need to get a custom slip one of these days i don't know why i don't but i love the slips that these jack wolf knives ship with uh, to begin with uh, on my <clears throat> in my waistband at the three o'clock today i had the kramer custom voodoo uh, this was one of the very first one of my very first custom uh, fixed blade knives that I carried, that I EDC'd, truly every day carried. And uh, I love it. I haven't carried it in a little while because, uh, you know, my attentions have been spread elsewhere, but really nice and thin. Um, and Eric Kramer, he, he does amazing work. He's been doing his thin EDC version of the Mac V SOG. That is just outstanding. He calls it the partisan Bowie, I think. And I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get one of those one of these days when I find that briefcase full of cash. This is 154 CM. He considers it a Persian. I consider it a clip point or Bowie. I asked him to sharpen the back edge, which he does every now and again. And he did. It came out beautifully. And uh, you can see here where this has been against the skin. It's a little bit darker uh, than this side. Excellent, excellent knife. Haven't carried that in a while. Now, uh, later on, we're going to be talking about outstanding EDC fixed blades. And we are not going to be talking about fixed blades in this spirit. This is definitely something I carry for self-defense. Uh, the knives we're going to be talking about later, of course, all could be pushed into that um, role as anything can, a hammer, a wrench, a stapler, whatever. Uh, but these knives that I'm going to be showing you later have more of a utility EDC uh, purpose than, than say this Eric Kramer custom voodoo, which is just so sweet. I need more Kramer custom knives in my life. Um, and I intend to get them. All right. Lastly, for emotional support, I had the Brian Brown designed Civivi EX1 or X1. Definitely a great e ESK because it's got three different ways of opening it. You can, you can use it with the, uh, flip it with the fuller. You can flip it with the, uh, with the flipper, obviously, or you can slow roll it using the fuller. Um, that one comes in especially handy with my right hand jacked up thumb, but you know, right here, uh, it, still weird sensations there just to get uh, keep you updated. Very thin hollow ground blade. This is Nitro V blade steel and a beautiful combination that black stone wash blade with this um, micarta green micarta handle. I really. Like this Civivi colorway, I'm, I'm sort of surrendering to the term colorway, though. I think it's insipid. Um, there's the Brian Brown logo and the very off-the-shelf clip, which is excellent, even though it's not embedded in the handle. It's still low profile enough with those flat screws that it, it goes nicely in the... I carry this in the back right pocket. Um, it's very easy for me to manipulate this one with the left hand. Not all knives are, but this one is definitely pretty easy. I love this knife. Um, <clears throat> one of my favorite Civivi releases recently. Wouldn't it be cool to have an XL version of that with a four-inch blade? Yes, it would be, Bob. All right, this is what I had on me today. I had the Pinkerton inversion with the ring. I had the uh, Benny's clip with the purple kiranite or the uh, Rita Hayworth curtain kiranite. I had the... Kramer Custom Voodoo Double Edge uh, Clip Point, and then I had the EX1 designed by Brian Brown, produced by Civivi. What did you have in your pockets? Let me know. Always interested to find this out. I'm going to put this stuff aside because I got some cool stuff from this past weekend I'm going to tell you about. So this past weekend, uh, I made a Camp Goomba sauce. What's that, you say? I made my usual or one of my usual tomato sauces. This is the tomato basil sauce for pasta. 
on the campfire. Not really a campfire, a fire pit fire. Uh, but man, it was so much fun. I was going to make a video and I, I was like, I've never done this on the fire. Let me make sure I can do it. Second time I'll do the video and uh, I'll, I'll have my girls do it and I'll edit it at work. After hours, of course, uh, because I, I want to make it look cool, but it was really fun to do. And the sauce came out deliciously, deliciously. It was uh, it was cooked over birch wood and, and it gave it just a very, very slight smokiness. Uh, cast iron pan, all the usual ingredients, uh, plus some very fresh basil, uh, which was nice to have. Uh, and sausage. I did it with uh, Italian, sweet Italian sausage. And um, man, it was awesome. But I had a couple of knives out there, of course. And I want to show you the, the 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 two main knives and the other tool that that uh, made this happen. So just to start with, this is the first fire I've ever lit legitimately, truly 100 percent without Vaseline or without some sort of accelerant, without a lighter. I, all I used was this. What's this called? Überleben, over life, uh, like living it, living it large in German, living to the max. I had this Überleben ferro rod that I just got off of Amazon, and it throws incredible sparks. Here, I'll do it right here. Why not? Uh, okay, I don't want to burn this, but it it throws these ferronesium sparks that um, kind of like smolder. You throw them. And they smolder uh, for a second or two and, and just long enough to ignite what you're throwing it on. So what I did was I've, I got some fat wood, uh, meaning I found a downed pine tree in the woods, cut off one of the branches right where it meets the tree and had about five inches of it. Did that twice. Uh, but inside, you know, when you carve off the, the out of the pith and, or the bark and the pith uh, on the inside, you have resin soaked wood. So that's where all of the sap, um, when the, when the, when the limb dies, all the sap kind of returns to the home and it, and it bottles up there and it makes it very flammable wood. So I made shavings of that wood on a piece of paper, uh, paper bag, basically a bunch of shavings of that. And then I threw Farinesium sparks or Ferro sparks on it and it ignited. And I brought it over to my, my, my fire pit where I had Tinder ready. And I started a fire without a lighter or matches to me that's a big deal 53 years it's the first fire i've set without a lighter so i'm very excited all right but what were the knives i was using uh i had two different knives to set tinder or to make tinder i was using this this is the amygdala which is on loan to me by billy ford of apex alchemy and this is he sent me two amygdalas to check out uh one was made by a knife maker brian vice i believe is his name which is a well, it's a good name for a knife maker. And and then the other, uh, sorry if I've messed up your name, I will find out for the main video I do of these, the close-up video. This one was made uh, by um, uh, Billy, Apex Alchemy, at and under the tutelage of um, uh, Jed Hornbeak in his shop. So this is a Beast 5160, and it just, man, it did an incredible job. Or no, this one is... Uh, 80 CRV. It did an incredible job batoning wood. This is a cool handle because it's it's like six fingers. So if you're a Nephilim, this is your knife. Uh, you've got room. Uh, and then me, I have uh, I have medium sized hands that I can sometimes cram into a small glove or sometimes needs a large. So they really are kind of down the middle. Uh, and so this gives you a place way back here to hold uh, onto the handle to baton up front. You've got a great uh, arched back. I'm not sure if that's why he designed this, but this is a great place uh, to start the cut on a batoning. You know, if you're spanning a, a, a piece of wood, especially one that's even larger than the blade, this hump is a great place to start. And then the fact that there's no thinning or swedge on the spine, this thing just pops, um, pops smaller logs open. You get to it like one, two, three hits it like pops open. Um, so awesome, awesome knife. Uh Oh, I think I loosened the handle a little bit maybe with that activity, but I'll, uh, and I, I heard that when I dropped it down on the table, I heard a little rattle. Um, maybe that was this actually, but I'll see if I need to tighten these bolts. So really nice knife by uh, Billy Ford, Apex Alchemy. He's a uh, brand new to the game and making his design 
well, he's got two designs, making them kind of however he can. And that's cool uh, by me. So very nice knife for that. The second knife I had on me, yes, it's my dad of the 1930s knife, uh, the Bark River Knives Boon Two. You say, what are you talking about, your dad of the 1930s? I have this vague notion about this knife. Uh, this is the sort of uh, precursor to the K-Bar. These were the kind of knives that guys were bringing with them to World War II before the K-Bar was created and using. They were just clip point, um, oftentimes stacked leather handle hunting knives. Um, and the Boone II by Bark River is, I got to say, it's my favorite incarnation of this style of knife, at least that I've seen so far. Um, I remember when it came out, it it sort of knocked me for a loop. It came out the same time the Quartermaster came out, other knives kind of of this uh, of this ilk uh, coming out from Bark River, but this one just really did it. And I wasn't looking at it like I'd normally do, like, oh, that'd make an awesome fighting knife. I was just like, this thing is like the perfect all around outdoors knife. And it reminds me of something. Uh, that uh, the camping dad of the 30s and 40s would have. I think camping really uh, became big in the 20s and 30s. I think the 30s, after World War I, um, people really started camping a lot, and this is the kind of thing they had on me. Anyway, this knife was great. As you can see, I also used this to baton. Uh, you can see some of the wood remnants there, but also great for with that uh, convex slash apple seed edge. Very nice for making feather sticks. Uh, which I have done in the past, but I didn't yesterday. I made little curls, and that's what I ignited with these. So I'm trying to start using my knives. I'm becoming interested in camping and outdoorsy kind of stuff uh, for two reasons. First of all, it's really fun to watch the videos. It's like the male version of watching a cooking video, though I love watching cooking videos too, but it's like watching guys with outdoor hacks is really fun, or girls. There are some... Uh, rather uh, fetching young ladies showing off uh, cool survival skills in the woods too, uh, like that. Uh, but um, really, I just see myself drifting towards that. I'm like, I have a lot of knives and it's really fun to use them. And I am a collector, but some of these things, it's like, I'm not selling these and I don't have a museum. So start using them. And this is a fun way to do it. Anyway, outdoor sauce, Goomba sauce. I highly recommend it. Uh, cast iron pan, garlic, onions, tomatoes, um, basil, sausage, or something good like that to, to make a nice oil, a uh, 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 meaty oil to cook everything in, you're good to go. All right. Sorry, that took way too long. We're going to come back with Knife Life News, but I want to remind you, if you want to help support the show and uh, have the opportunity to win some fantastic knives uh, every third Thursday of the month here on Thursday Night Knives, become a patron. Just scan the QR code here or go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. The knifejunkie.com slash battle box. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Speaking of the great outdoors, something new from RMJ, which is very exciting. And I say that because RMJ uh, earned their bones making tomahawks for war, uh, but ha has begun making a lot of really cool tomahawks just for general use in the outdoors, uh, as well as axes. They have the new uh, Patriot Pipe Hawk, and this is extremely exciting. Uh, I like pipe hawks. I like smoking pipes in various uh, forms, and uh, but I've never smoked a pipe, never smoked out of one of these, and I always thought they were super cool. But you know that if it's coming from RMJ, this relatively kind of delicate design, because it is hollowed out and it does have a pipe down the middle, um, you know that coming from RMJ, it's going to be ultra robust. Um, yes, we've seen scab sort of... Um, destroy the the snuggles warhammer by them uh but i in general their stuff is quite quite robust uh so it's interesting to see them make a patriot pipe hawk or make the patriot pipe hawk uh but make it also usable a lot of times you'll see people make pipe hawk style tomahawks but they don't have the full godilla like the hollowed out handle you can smoke through. Uh, this is made of 6150, which is an ultra tough high carbon steel, takes a lot of impact. And then that um, ash 
haft is uh, lathed. Uh, this is cool. It's lathed on an old, it's uh, turned on an old lathe that was created to make the 1903 Springfield stock. So the old uh, World War I bolt action rifle. Uh, the handle is made on the same lathe, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so it's got a nice story. It's very smokable, apparently. And then at the very top, you see that little nubbin looks like a, a, a brainer up there. Uh, that actually is a plug that removes that allows you to uh, ream out. Thank you. Uh, allows you to ream out that pipe uh, to, to clean out the resin and such. So very exciting. The RMJ Patriot Pipe Tomahawk. Now that I'm sitting here talking about it, I think this might be the first RMJ I save up for. I, I love their tomahawks, but tomahawks aren't a part of my daily life. I do like to smoke, so uh, maybe I will get this. I just got a, a new pipe uh, with a whole wax canvas kit in the whole nine yards. So wouldn't a tomahawk go nicely with that? Uh, okay, next up from Lion Steel. This is also something that uh, looks really cool and very appealing to me, kind of on a different level. Uh, this is more on the EDC fixed blade level, kind of like the stuff we're going to be talking about here soon. Uh, this is called the Ago or Ago. I'm not sure how, it, how it's being pronounced, but this is from Lion Steel and it's designed by Gianluigi Simonella, who goes by Wilson, which I think is hilarious. His nickname is Wilson, but, uh, Gianluigi Simonella, uh, designed this beautiful, very slim, sleek EDC folder. Um, what's interesting about this to me is that it looks like it should be larger. Now that is a, um, uh, a 3.11 inch m390 blade and just by looking at it probably about the same length in the handle so a pretty small excuse me fixed blade knife at six inches but what's cool is that it's got a full old school guard on it it's got a it's not integrated into the full tang this is a full tang handle uh, it's not integrated in the full tang or anything it's a serious old school guard uh so i i I'm really, I've fallen in love with this just in the past uh, day since I saw this. And I think I might have to get it. It comes in a uh, a variety of uh, wood and micartas, woods and micartas. See, that, that kind of guard you never see on an EDC blade. I, I just think it's so cool. Uh, it comes, you know, I'm not sure what kind of sheath it comes in, honest to goodness. Hopefully it's leather. This thing looks like it belongs in leather. <clears throat> it is available now from Lion Steel. Uh, but if you want to get it from one of its dealers, you're going to have to wait a little bit. But it should be the, it should be there soon. Um, hmm. I see like olive wood. I see white micarta. I see something that looks like a carbon fiber, but they they say it's just micarta and wood. Uh, but interesting, full tang, but also one solid uh, handle that fits over the tang uh, in a solid piece that's milled out. So there you go. Very cool. Uh, looking forward to that. Next, uh, from Benchmade, uh, you know how I feel about Benchmade. I love that they're made in America. Uh, I love their history um, and and a couple of their knives. Uh, but I'm not I'm not a, a huge Benchmade fan. But this one uh, is one of the knives I'm a huge fan of. That's the Bug Out, and they have one coming out called the Burnt Brass Bug Out. Not brass, actually. It's an aluminum handle anodized in that burnt brass color, which is totally totally cool by me because you don't get the weight of the brass but you still get the beautiful look uh true you don't get the patina you know brass has a really nice patina and you can see from that sort of tiffany blue thumb stud they're sort of thinking of the patina uh or evoking it but you're not going to get it from that handle uh they're keeping this thing relatively light that's what the bug out uh that's what the bug outs usp is is its lightness uh to length and capability in this case, it's only 2.5 ounces, which is, you know, pretty light. Uh, you you used to hear, you don't hear this anymore much, but it's like an ounce per inch of blade length. In this case, this would make this a light knife. Uh, M390 blade steel. Uh, so that's a, a change from the usual S30, uh, S30V. Look at that. That's a beautiful little knife. I, I've always liked the bug out quite a bit. Uh, it is available now. Go check it out. That's a Battle Wash DLC uh blade coating by the way check that one out if you like bench made all right lastly here uh from a designer that i really love he's been on the show a couple of times that's o stop hell 
from Poland. He's got a new one with Civivi, and this is the largest folding Civivi ever. Uh, this is called the HID. You can tell that uh, some non-English people designed and made this knife. It's called the HID. And this is no diss on Ostap Hell. His English is beautiful, more beautiful than mine, and way better than my Polish. Uh, this is a 4.14 inch sheep's foot or cleavery sheep's foot blade. Man alive. I look at this and I think camp cut cutlery like this uh, when you look at the where the edge of the blade is compared to the bottom of the handle where the where the fingers go and where the knuckles might go you can see that the knuckles are going to clear whatever surface you're cutting on this would make an excellent folding uh, chef's knife or folding camp cook knife because of that length you know uh, for 4.14 inches uh, this is 14c28n which is a blade steel that was originally created for uh bushcraft and that kind of thing um or what yeah bushcraft uh, there's another uh there's another um one of the i think 12c28 was designed for scalpels anyway uh durable uh tough steels that keep a great edge and are extremely stainless um <clears throat> That's what you get from 14C here. This is uh, uh, three different kinds of G10. It's got a, re a reverse carry pocket clip uh, of the wire persuasion. And I have not used it yet, but uh, or even held it, but I am betting dollars for donuts. Haven't even watched a video yet. Uh, I know Jared has one. I I'm betting you can use that fuller to reverse flick it. Ooh, there's the green and black version. I do like the green and black version quite a bit. <clears throat> anyway, uh, that's it for Knife Life News. These are the cool new knives that have come out this week. It's funny, uh, Civivi, they're always dropping new knives. How cool is that? Can you imagine if your favorite brand of car were doing that or your favorite brand of anything else? Seems like knives, they're always dropping a new one. Uh, so you can follow us and follow this kind of news on the website. That's the knife junkie.com. You can also buy cool stuff there. Uh, we have knife junkie merch there. That's logoed stuff with the logo you see up here in the corner. Uh, there's also a lot of really cool stuff that Jim develops and puts up there. That's the knife junkie.com slash shop. You can get endless amounts of cool t-shirts and other stuff with, uh, awesome designs that are great and powerful uh, Jim makes. So go to the knife junkie.com slash shop and get your knife junkie merch right now. All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection and then 10 great EDC fix blades. The shockwave tactical torch is your ultimate self-defense companion featuring a powerful led bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, the knifejunkie.com slash shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. First up from my brother, a machete from 1943. Yep, the sheath is from 1943. We do know that. Listen to this. <laughs> it's got a metal throat. Very cool. Uh, but when you look at the at the machete itself, it is also dated 1943. Check this thing out. So Distin US 19. That's a four. It looks kind of like a one here, 1943. Uh, this obviously is a World War II era machete. I don't know its provenance or provenance, what however you say that word. I've only ever really read it. Uh, but but I got to find out where it comes from. It's got a Bakelite handle. We've kind of come to that conclusion. Uh, a beautifully convexed edge uh, that looks like it was done with sandpaper. And then uh, a, a, a well-pitted, well-used blade. Man alive. I can only imagine what this knife has, what this machete has seen. Now, 1943, it was a World War II issued uh, machete i don't like i said i don't know where it went i need to look up distant 1943 machetes find out where they may have ended up on the world stage but um i i know probably not western europe 
probably not Africa. These were probably in the South Pacific uh, for cutting through jungles and and all the um, uh, foliage on the on those islands. We've all seen Thin Red Line. Um, imagine this is the kind of machete they had um, there. So I gotta I gotta check this out. But my brother Victor Vito, uh, as I you know, he's born Victor, but I like to call him Vito. Uh, thank you so much, uh, my man. This thing is so beautiful. And what an incredible addition to my uh, World War II slash Korea era K-Bar behind the microphone there. And then my World War II bring back that he gave me. That's a Chris. And then up there, <laughs> the uh, uh, the 1918 trench knife. And he also gave me this uh, Fairbairn Sykes. My brother... <laughs> My brother, it, he would have loved to have all of these because he's really into this historical period. Uh, but instead, he gave them to me because that's the kind of person he is. Uh, so I'm very lucky. I have an awesome family. Uh, I can never stress that enough. Um, so thank you, Vic. This thing is super cool. And I got to say, this this just takes the cake. Doesn't it? Doesn't it just? So it does have this. Uh, sort of attachment to the old school web belts. So if I were to actually carry this, which I won't, uh, I would have to figure out another way to do it. Maybe create a frog that slips up over the whole thing. All right. Machete aside, you'll you'll be seeing that on the wall back here some point soon. Next up, from Doug Bowl. Oh, Doug. He's a, he's a good friend of the show and a patron. Uh, he's a patron. He's a mega patron. He's just He's awesome. Thank you, Doug. Uh, he sent me this. This is a World War II era knife. This is now, this is a current production from K-Bar, but this is the Ek number 44 Commando Dagger. This is a knife I've been lusting after for years. Uh, the handle? Oh, well, okay. First of all, why, you say? Because they were they were always very coveted, uh, coveted by the troops. I remember reading a long time ago, coveted by World War II troops and then uh, beyond. But also, they just look super cool. They have that incredible handle. I love the handle shape. Um, and then, of course, it's a dagger. It's got the S Quillians. I love the S Quillians. Something that I was always kind of like, huh? Is the handle to blade ratio? It's a that is a. I'm going to measure it just to be 100% accurate. Six and a half inch blade with a six with a, a five and three quarters inch handle. So a very uh, close handle to blade ratio for a dagger. Usually we would see something more like that. Uh, but I have discovered in in having it. And, and I know that this is something that stuck in, in Doug's craw because um, he wanted to EDC this. The handle's too long. Well, the handle allows you to use this knife in a saber grip with the thumb fully extended forward uh, for this kind of fighting. Um, sometimes we use knives, we put our fingers, uh, we put our thumb on the spine. Well, you can't do that here because it's double-edged. So I've discovered that the long handle is this. And then in discussing it on Thursday Night Knives, lots of people mentioned, yeah, lots of daggers have that long handle and it's for that. <laughs> so always late to the party, but really happy to discover and own this knife. Thank you so much, Doug. You don't know how much this means to me. Not only your generosity and support of the show, but this happens to be one I've always, always had my eye on and thought was super cool. All right. Lastly, uh, Harry, another generous fella, Harry Orifice of Off Grid Knives sent me these, and I've been carrying them all week. I've been carrying this one all week, which which has become mine. Uh, this is the Off Grid Mamba Three, uh, the Mamba Two, affectionately called the Black Mamba version two, was a three inch version. I think the one before it, the number one, was a three and a half. So spanning spanning all the sizes now we've got the four inch in magna cut with anodized titanium handles this thing is so wicked i love it and like most uh off-grid knives the small version is as thick as the large version so that makes the small version very manageable in hand for a smaller knife it also makes the large version manageable in the pocket it feels relatively svelte I absolutely love this. I have only done light cutting with this. I've done a bit, 
Uh, but I've only done light cutting with this. I can't wait to put this magna cut to the test. Um, I'm very, very excited about this knife. Thank you, Carrie. So this one is mine. I am keeping this one and I am giving this one away because I already have a black on black. Blah, blah, blah. You don't need to know all that, but I will be giving this away. This will be the gentleman junkie knife giveaway knife. I didn't even let Jim know that. And, uh, and we will be giving it away with the tool he sent. This is the version two of the EDC tool. Now there, uh, Carrie is always improving and updating his his designs uh, this is the version one i love it i use it all the time the version two has i guess stronger magnets to hold this in you don't need the o-ring and um seems a little slight bit maybe thinner the anodizing looks a little nicer um and super spin on that wow super spin on that Spin on mine is pretty good too. So a very, very nice uh, EDC tool uh, with the three most common hex sizes in there. Six, eight, and 10, I guess. Six, eight, and forgive me, I should have checked this out. 10, yep, that's right. Uh, so Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway knife will be the Mamba V3, four inch Magna Cut and titanium Warncliffe folder totally totally bad to the bone and i gotta say uh i'm very ex happy that they added the tab uh filler there filler tab and this golf ball texture is awesome all right so that's what i've got new this week ah, still weird with thumb oh poor me okay let's get into some of these awesome edc fixed blade knives and when i'm talking about edc edc fixed blade knives i want to reiterate these are not self-defense knives. They could all be used for that. And I probably tested out most of them in that on cardboard and other stuff. But I'm thinking about extremely useful, extremely carryable fixed blade knives uh, for all sorts of chores, including up to and including survival and, and uh, in a pinch survival and camping kind of stuff. <clears throat> First one in this category, something I've been carrying all well it's no longer summer we're we're deeply into fall but i was carrying this all summer and continue to this is the primitive wicket from uh tom nugent and knives by nuge first of all great sheath that's a huge part of an edc fixed blade is the sheath uh so perfect sheath and with where the grommets are located it hangs perfectly straight he's got this awesome leather cordage on here with a quick release um, but the knife itself is just outstanding. Um, you've got a Scandi ground. Um, I'll measure it just to see. Two inch blade, Scandi ground, super sharp ADCRV2. You can see that there. Uh, this is the primitive model, meaning it does not have handle slabs. It is simply wrapped with jute cord and uh, drenched in epoxy and singed and all that. And man, it's awesome. It's a great grip. It's no more than you need. Uh, of course, a thicker grip would probably feel slightly more sure in hand, but uh, you're making, you're balancing this with availability with a thick handle. I would not be carrying this like I do. I mean, this is my most carried by far neck knife uh, besides the one that rides behind my ID uh, at work. This little neck knife gets a lot of use. I've used this a lot for food, uh, randomly having it at restaurants and cutting, uh, uh, and cutting things, uh, cutting food. I also used this recently, the first time I made cowboy coffee. I used this to, um, what do you call it, uh, baton. And this would not even span the wood, but I'd put, put it halfway in, turn it around, halfway down the other side, and it just pops it open. Uh, believe it or not, with that little, with that Scandi edge, this little knife is awesome at batoning and other stuff. Uh, it's got a 90 degree spine, so throws sparks nicely. This is the Primitive Wicket by Knives by Nuge. And you'll see that most of these here are custom knives or knives made by small producers, but they aren't, but if you're in, you know, if you're in the buying realm that a lot of us are in, they're, they are not like buying custom folders where they're costing you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars or, um, 
you know, big, big money. All right, next up, this is the off-grid knives, a production knife, off-grid knives, hoglet. The hoglet ships in a great sheath. Uh, you might not like the clip. This is just a piece of bent kydex. It works for me, I got to say, because this is not something I carry in the waistband. I usually, if I have this on, it's around the house for around the house chores, and this works great. Uh, you can hang it upside down if you're cool or uh, right side up. Either way, fits great because the sheath fits great. Uh, it is a cleaver style blade. I always think it looks like a great cheese knife. Uh, I have used this as a picnic knife uh, for cheese. It's a little thick for cheese, <laughs> I got to say. Uh, much better for wood and cardboard as all uh, off-grid knives are uh, excel at cutting cardboard. This one has that cool little style hole up front, like it looks like an old school cleaver. Uh, but with this, you really do get a point. This is much, I, I'm not a huge fan of the cleaver style blades. This is how I like them. Jimping all the way up, you can really bear down on it. And you have a nice point here. Uh, also, this one won't break the bank. Uh, this one is under $60. And uh, depending on where you get it, uh, but I think, yeah, you can buy them from Off Grid or Amazon, and they are, I think they're around 55 bucks right now. Awesome, awesome knife. This, by the way, is Cryo D2. Um, they stipulate Cryo a lot. I'm not sure how much that uh, means. Uh, I know it makes it tougher or something. Uh, next up is from Off Grid Knives. I mean, from, sorry, t Knives. And this is an older version of this knife. But this is the combatant. Uh, the combatant is a three, three and a quarter inch blade, uh, about a three inch cutting edge. And uh, now it has a more acute point. The new version of this has a more acute point and a larger swedge. And I would love to get that. However, he, uh, Tim Kell's got a new one coming out on this platform, but it's a true Warncliffe, meaning uh, it starts from the handle it's a continuous curve down to the tip with a totally flat edge and that one is called the adversary i'm very much looking forward to that uh this is a very handy edc knife yes it could be pressed into self-defense but it's not that's not its primary issue even though it's called the combatant um tim himself carries this one all the time just for edc around the house chores this is one of those knives where i feel like a little jimping right up here would be nice. Totally a uh, personal matter of taste. It's not necessary. Uh, these um, TKL knives are all almost all nickel boron coated. Almost all I say because I think he does one other finish that doesn't get the nickel boron. Um, very, very nice. ADCRV2, super sharp, incredible edge, um, and a, uh, just what you need handle. No more. Uh, he's very good at doing that. Tim Kell is very good at designing knives that have no more handle than than is needed, even in the reverse grip. Uh, this one I have set up for in the waistband or pocket carry currently. Sometimes I have it set up to ride horizontally on the front. Speaking of knives that ride horizontally on the front, uh, this next one is by uh, Mike at uh, Mike Cahill at 310 Forge. Uh, man, his stuff is beautiful. I met him last year at the Texas Custom Knife Show. He's a Texas knife maker, young man. Um, I think he's also a preacher. And uh, he quoted some some Bible verse to me, not in a not in in a way that was off putting at all. It was actually pretty cool. Uh, but here's one of his uh, here's one of his knives. And now that I'm looking at it, I think this sheath is stitched. Uh, stitched together with sinew. Really awesome sheath. This is the very rare leather sheath that rides very low profile on the front in that sort of front scout style. Uh, this is his mini scalper model, 1095 blade steel with an incredibly sharp, his nice and thin. It's very thin. Uh, I think it's, um, is it a 16th of an inch? It's very thin. Um, but that's a Scandi grind on a very thin edge. So it's incredibly sharp, incredibly sharp. I can get a three finger, three and a half finger grip on this beautiful rosewood handle. 
and man alive i love this oh no no this isn't rosewood that's cherry cherry wood and cherry is a unique and uh, you don't see too much cherry wood uh my grandfather uh built furniture and stuff and he loved cherry uh feels great in hand and uh i used this this past weekend this was on my belt when i was doing making the sauce i didn't i kept forgetting it was on my belt so i don't think i really used it much uh but really really awesome awesome knife uh check out 310 forge especially if you like bowie knives man uh mike cahill forges some incredible bowies he's also the guy that got me to smoke pipes now, thanks johnny i've been thinking of taking up smoking uh yeah he he got me to smoke pipes because i'm like man that looks that looks he was smoking his pipe and i was like man that smells good looks good it's a little bit less obnoxious than a cigar in my opinion though i love cigars and and uh he's a young man i could pull that off he's like half my age all right, next up, uh, this is a not a custom knife. This is a, a, a easily affordable production knife that I've been so impressed with. This was a gift from my brother-in-law, James, an awesome dude, uh, the candy man. Um, anyway, that's what the his Marines called him because uh, he was a badass Marine. Uh, this is the Waxaha. There it goes. The sheath is so good, I shot it off the table. Uh, this is the Waxahashi waxahachi from sen cut and it's got that beautiful blade that we saw on the brazen the clip point blade i love that clip point blade it keeps the point low slung kind of lower than center line so you get a lot of utility out of it but you still get a belly and a high rising clip point uh, and a high rising clip slash swedge that adds to uh the the puncturing capability of this knife uh, i keep thinking i'm gonna die the handle but oh man, it's so good in reverse grip. It is so good. This is perfectly designed up here. Uh, I don't carry this enough. And you know what? I'm tempted away from some of the fancier knives I have. But this, uh, I have this set up. If I didn't shoot the, the uh, sheath off the table, I'd show you. But I have this set up for front scout carry um, so that the handle is facing left or west so that when I draw it, it's in a reverse grip in my right hand such a great great carry what is this hang on uh 8 or 9 cr 18 mov blade steel very very sharp very great useful knife this one would <laughs> very great it is very great and useful uh this one would flex awesomely into that uh self defense role so definitely consider the senkut waxahashi waxahachi all right, another custom knife and a Bowie, um, but again, in that range where if you're buying expensive folders, this is nothing for you uh, in terms of money and output. This is the uh, Auxiliary Manufacturing Pocket Bowie. I love this knife. This one was sent to me from Michael Jarvis. He sent a few of these out. This was last um, Thanksgiving of 2023. Um he sent a bunch of these out. This is his uh, kind of his signature model right now. It's so easily carryable, uh, drops in the pocket like nothing. Though I have it set up for in the waistband carry with the with the uh, tension cord. So I just uh, wrap this around a belt loop, slip this in the waistband. It stays right there, and then I can tug it, and it comes out of the sheath. The sheath drops and dangles, and I've got this in hand. Um, always set up for this reverse grip this handle this coffin shaped handle with the facets and all that oh my gosh this is a great handle he could put a bunch of different blades on this one uh the coffin shape is great because it tapers down by the guard but then widens back out so it gives you a uh, a great place to focus your your um pinching energy that sounds weird uh, uh focus the tension of your grip so that you don't slide up and then the the same on the back except it widens out gives you a great place to put your thumb this knife is awesome you got a recurve here and uh forward or backward he does this in a wrapped version that i'd love to get and then i just saw uh last night as i'm recording this so maybe three or four days ago for you uh that he put up an xl version of this and i saw a lot of people like myself going googly-eyed bonkers over it it is so cool with that long swedge 
very, very puncturable. And then with that recurve, uh, just going to slash and slice like, like nobody's business. This one, I believe, is in MagnaCut. We're going to say it's MagnaCut. I'm pretty sure it is. So uh, check check him out. He's got uh, also many other excellent EDC fixed blades in the Carl Jr., in the Pocket Rocket, and a number of others. This next one is from uh, Aaron Bieber and AB Knives. This is a beauty. Um, this is the 302 by Aaron Bieber Knives. The 302. It is a, to me, it's a mix. It's a blend of a clip point like Bowie style knife and a Warncliffe. Warncliffe in that it's got a, a point way down low and it's got a nearly straight edge, though it gives you some belly to work with. Uh, but then it's got that clip and a long swedge. That swedge is a, a nice little hollow ground swedge there. So you you get major, major puncturability out of this. It's not a word and I keep using it. You get major penetration with that tip. Um, it is a pretty fine tip, but not too dainty. Um, and this one is Magna Cut, super thin uh, on the blade steel, uh, on the grind, I mean, and really, really sharp. The handle on this is outstanding. It is the best Sukamaki rep. This one and the next one you'll see are the two best I've ever experienced. And this in my hand just it feels so good. And you have the alternating peaks and valleys that you get with a classic uh, wrap like that. And I prefer it when a wrap either uh, uh, loops and wraps back in the middle like that, or at least twists in the middle so that you get a high peak and, and a deep valley, because that's really what gives this thing the incredible grip. This, just with that um, IBW band, uh, on the belt up front in scout style, this is incredible. You forget it's there. It's one of those kind of knives. Forget it's there until you need it, of course. Shout out to Aaron Bieber and the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, where we both went. Uh, all right. This next one is by Josh Mason, Bright for War Knives. And he's been doing some unreal stuff lately. I mean, his work is so impeccable, so beautiful. Uh, but he's been making bigger versions of his stuff and it's got, it's got my appetite wet, but this is a, uh, neck knife Quaken. Uh, I don't use it as a neck knife though. Actually it does quite nicely as such, but I do the same thing I do with the pocket Bowie, uh, from auxiliary manufacturing. I just loop this around a belt loop and then stick this in the waistband. And then when I tug it, the sheath falls free and dangles at my waist and then I have this in hand. This beautiful Quaken is incredible. So uh, Josh Mason is very inspired by Japanese knives, as you can tell from this one. And one of the ways he makes them, he doesn't do them all like this, but in this case, he did a full flat grind all the way down to a zero edge and then knocked off the edge at a 20 degree uh, cutting angle. You can see under this light uh, some... Um, some marking on the blade. I forced a patina on it and then was very unhappy with it and then couldn't fully remove it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, joke's on me. This is a 1095 blade steel. That's ray skin in there. And I love how dirty it looks. It looks like natural. You know, I have ray skin um, on my Pical that on my um, Copus uh, Elvia that Josh wrapped and he put purple ray skin i love that you can dye ray skin and make it different but this to me looks like it was just peeled off the ray the poor bastard and put on my knife uh again alternating peaks and valleys one of the best i've ever experienced uh in terms of sukamaki wrap and then he's got the what is this thing called turban wrap or something seeks wrap something like that uh, around here to stop the hand from sliding up onto that uh handle such a great knife uh, would work awesome as a self-defense knife in that reverse grip or you could of course go like this uh, outstanding also a very very cool logo jay mason check him out bright for war on instagram or uh, i think you can also find him under josh mason really nice work i'd love to get one of his larger double-edged things that he recently has made 
Second to last on this list is super inexpensive and easily uh, attained. This is the, or obtained. This is the Cold Steel Mini Tac Bowie. So there it is. The Mini Tac has this handle. This is a very old design from them. Um, I believe uh, Andrew Demko started. Uh, created this handle design way back when in 2006 when he started with cold steel and this is a great three and a half finger knife you have the sub hilt here so really you know if you can't fit all your fingers on there you have that sub hilt to for retention so really brilliant design in this case it's the bowie now i have um this the skinner model that um Dave gave me, and then I've had the Kiridashi for years. Uh, I love this line of, of knives. I should get before it goes out. You know, you never know when they're going to discontinue something, but they have a Tonto version of this. That's excellent. This is very thin and very sharp. What's the blade steel on this? 8CR13 MOV. Come on, admit it. You don't need anything more than that. Uh, it's, it is blasted, so I don't know. Sometimes I like to sand down a blasted finish. It kind of makes it uh, less or more resistant to to uh, rust and such. But look at that handle. That that's faux G10, F A O F A U X G10, faux G10. Uh, that means fake in French. All you animals out there. Uh, and this here uh, is uh, jimping. Of course, you know I'm joking. Uh, this here is jimping here. And uh, it does feel quite good. There's only four jimps, uh, but it does a great job. Uh, I, I really recommend this one. Again, I have this set up. You could wear it as a neck knife just fine. But I have it set up for in the waistband carry with the, um, with the cord release. I'm smelling meat wafting down from upstairs. That's a good sign. All right. And now uh, the last knife on this list, awesome EDC fixed blades. This is a custom knife, but again, like I said, if you have a, a nice spider coat, you can afford this. This is the Hogtooth Knives Little Ruffian. Uh, I was joking with Matt. I said, we, you should call it the Lil Ruffian, L-I-L apostrophe, and he about slapped me over the phone. Uh, and I wouldn't want that dude to slap me. He knows what he's doing. Uh, this here is a small version of the large Ruffian. You've seen that knife here ad nauseum a million times. I'm so psyched he made a small version of this. Fits right in the pocket. This is a three or three and a uh, three or three and a half finger. For me, it's pretty much four fingers, uh, but a, a pretty small handle. 154 cm blade, deeply hollow ground, very thin behind the edge. And you've got, yeah, yeah, very thin behind the edge. And you've got that beautiful uh, acid stone wash. And this jimping here, uh, this was the first, I believe, ever laser cut jimping he, he's done. So he got a new laser and he does markings with it. But I guess he can also cut jimping with it unless he got a different laser for that. Uh, this one, he's going to make the sheath a little. Uh, he has been making the sheath a little bit looser. This is the first one he's ever made. So you can see a little bit of that scuffing. I don't mind that. Uh, but. Someone who buys it might. He gave this to me, and uh, the, the prototype lives on, and now he's selling these uh, pretty nicely. An outstanding EDC fixed blade. The Hogtooth Knives Little Ruffian. All right, well, thanks for uh, coming with me on this road. No, no, let me, let me start this over. Thanks for joining me for this list of awesome uh, EDC fixed blades. Uh, I love these. They can all be used for self-defense. You know that that's always my primary focus when I'm, uh, EDC fixed blading out there in the real world. Uh, but when I'm around the house, I always want to have a fixed blade knife on me that I can do anything, anything with. Um, so these are some of my favorites. What are yours? Let me know, drop them in the comments below and perhaps we read them next week. All right. Thanks for joining me. And, uh, and Jim, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday night knives, 10 PM Eastern standard time live right here on uh, YouTube and uh, join us on Sunday for a great conversation with the knife luminary. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.